sometimes we could all use an extra hand or thumb. So here I am with both testing the capabilities of these wearable robots. How easy are they to use? Can I hold things? Will the movements feel natural? What are they for? And will wearing these make me superhuman? I'm Amit Katwala. I'm a writer and editor for Wired, and I've always been fascinated by how technology can enhance human performance. So when I heard that a team of researchers at the University of Tokyo were working on a set of wearable robotic arms, I just had to go and find out more. The design of the arms was inspired in part by traditional Japanese puppetry. They're intended to enhance human capabilities, much like an instrument. I asked one of the creators of the arms, Professor Masahiko Inami, to tell me more. This is a small copy of this movement. So physical computing yeah. to avoid the collision. Also, it's very intuitive. They can easily understand. No, this puppet master has a sensors yeah. to measure joint angle, what are five potentiometers for each arm. Yeah. This sensor are sensing signal. Yeah. And so based on this signal, the arms following, in yeah. this motion, perfectly. So the sensors, the data from the sensors goes into the 3D model yes. in the laptop, yes. and then that then controls the bigger arms. Yes. So the key components of the system are the backpack, the sockets, then the, the motors in the arm, yes. and then the motors in the wrists. Yes. That kind of brings it all together. Yes, and so each joint can, uh, is connected with carbon FRP. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's almost like the bones yes. of the suit. Yeah, like a bone, yes. Yeah. Professor Inami says that the robot arms could one day be used for sport, medicine, or rehabilitation. So we have proposed so superhuman sports. Maybe in future, so when we attach or detach this type of superhuman wrist to play new type of sports. Yeah. This is one application. Also, we are able to find some serious application like assisting some medical surgery. Mm. This hand hold my wrist. Mm. So it can also teach me how to move my arm. So from remote side or from computer side. Uh, it also helps us conducting rehabilitation or so acquiring some new type of skills such as martial arts or some other things. Now that I understand the basic mechanics of the suit, it's time to test it out. So it's pretty heavy and when I move around, I can kind of feel it moving around behind me, but it's actually kind of comfortable. I look pretty cool. I look like I've merged with a robot, which is amazing. My silhouette looks mental. It's so cool. <laughs> Now Professor Anami is going to demonstrate how this all works using the Puppet Master. Yes. So it's high. Just shake hand. Hi. This is so cool. I can feel it like vibrating and stuff. It's quite strange to have these limbs moving around you without your control. You can kind of hear the, the shoulders kind of vibrating as they lift the arms up and down. You can really hear it like whirring and like, you know, you can really hear the motors working as, as it moves. I think it really makes you aware of like how much force is being put through just to lift up these arms. It sounds kind of mechanical, but also like kind of, I don't know, biological, almost like there's some animal like purring back there or something like that. Quite unnatural to shake hands with yourself. There we go. Yeah. So humans have got this ability called proprioception, which is your ability to know where your limbs are in space without having your eyes open. It gives you the ability to touch your nose, for instance, without having your eyes open. We're going to see if I can tell where these robotic limbs are with my eyes shut as Professor Nami moves them around. OK, I think my left top arm is moving up and down. I think my bottom right arm is moving. Like I think left and right arms are both moving now. Maybe it's top left and bottom right. I think it's here, Perfect. maybe. Perfect. Yes. Okay, so I can definitely feel myself leaning this way and I could, I could feel vibrations over my right shoulder. So I think it's this arm. I think from the way that my body is now angled, I'm thinking that it's the bottom right arm, so maybe like that. Yes. Both, yeah, yes. that makes sense, right? Yes. So you can see how okay. off balance yes. I am because like yes. both sorry. arms are moving. And that's like, what's like, like four kilos of extra yeah. arms. So it makes sense that I'm kind of counterbalancing a bit. Now that I've tried the arms with Professor Anami controlling their movement, I'm going to try them for myself. The controller feels very light compared to the arm, which is obviously a lot heavier and feels much more robust. So I'm being quite careful with how I move it. I feel like I should be, I'm gonna try and touch my nose, see if that works. Hi. Uh, yeah, it definitely feels different. I, I feel I'm much more like tentative about moving it myself, actually, like almost got more comfortable with other people moving it around. But with this, I find I make a sudden motion with my actual hand. I could end up getting you know, slapped in the face with a 3D printed hand, which is not what you'd want. Finally, I wanted to test how well the robot arms were able to pick up items. My job here was to try and collaborate with the robot, which was easier for some objects than for others. We're going to try and grab this little soft bird thing here, level one. And then I'll take that. 
Thank you very much. Success. <laughs> Next level, we're going to try and pick up this ball. We might need two hands for this one. Oh, what? Oh, 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 oh. Come on, we can do it. Yes. Success. <laughs> We're going to try and pick up the pen and then the robot's going to hand me the pen. I'm going to take the lid off and then the robot's going to try and write something with the pen. So you need this scripter here. No, not success. That's it. Yes, 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 yes. No. Just cheat a little bit. I think if you got it like perfect, there you go. If you got it like perfectly centered. Okay, right. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Artists, I wouldn't worry about robots taking your job just yet. Overall, I'm really impressed. And I think with a bit of practice, it could get even better. And now it's back to London. Thank you. After trying the robotic arms in Tokyo, I headed closer to home to Cambridge to meet with Danny Claude and the team that is working on a third thumb. That's right, a third thumb. Whoa. <laughs> Danny Claude is an augmentation and prosthetics designer at the University of Cambridge's Plasticity Lab. Yeah, so this is my third thumb. Um, so starting on the handpiece, there's uh, the thumb, obviously. So it's a flexible um, thumb. It's completely 3D printed and there's kind of three main elements. It's got a rigid handpiece with flexible straps. And then that's connected to two motors that I wear on my wrist, very similar position to a watch. And then you can see those are kind of pulling the yeah. third thumb. And that's connected to this wearable up here. Uh, this is the battery, mm -hmm. uh, which is replaceable. And then this PCB is wirelessly connected to what I'm wearing in my shoes yeah. and around my ankles. Obviously, I had to try it for myself. You've got two pressure sensors, one mm -hmm. underneath each big toe. And it's just basically a pulley system. It's completely flexible mm. um, 3D print. So it's very compliant. Now press your toes down. One at each Whoa. toe. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> so that's, so that's your left toe. That's so cool. Okay. And then your right toe does okay. it. Yeah, so I can like move it. So and do, yeah, so um, it give it a kind of really, really slow, delicate press. Yeah, you'll see that there's a proportional control. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. you have a lot of control over it. Or you can go fast, do a f fast, quick press. Yeah. It's quite powerful, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah like, wow. It just surprised people. It's <laughs> so cool. The speed is controlled by how hard you press down. So that is pretty quick. And you can do like a bit more of a slower, like more delicate movements. So actually trying to like move them in tandem and getting the pressure right, I think is going to be a real challenge of like learning how to use this. On the left foot, I've actually got on quite a good level of control over like, the pressure. It's really powerful. Look, you can see if I, if I squeeze it like that, you can see how much pressure it's putting on the palm of my hand there, look. Sounds like a little little robot or like a little like droid or something from Star Wars. You can kind of see the 3D printed like corrugation on the inside. And then these tendons are like super thin. What are they made of, Danny? It's kind of like a, a technical fishing line. Okay, yeah, so fishing line, yes. Yeah, so yeah, like, yeah, I guess yeah. it's strong and light and, and like pretty robust. Now that I know how to control it, I wanted to test out the capabilities of this robotic thumb. In the team's research, they found that generally people can use it functionally within the first minute, but to get to those finer motor skills, you need closer to a week. Test one, ball grip. The thing to remember is to not use your other fingers, because that's <laughs> yeah. our kind of go-to, is yeah, where we just grip it. Yeah. Right pressure sensor, and then just press and hold. Yeah, yeah so this is the yeah. uh, little practice bit. Yeah. We'll start here. <laughs> Difficulty, three out of ten. So this is our next yeah. um, kind of object task. Pick up as many balls as you can with your biological hand. Yeah. And then use the third thumb to pick up the kind of last ball yeah. or an extra one. Uh, I'm back. <laughs> Maybe four will ambitious. The goal of this test is to determine what the third thumb can do to expand the function of the hand overall. Difficulty, six out of ten. So I think when the hand is oriented away from you, you don't have that proprioception, right? You don't know where the hand is situated in space, whereas obviously with your own fingers you know exactly where they are when you're not looking at them so that's one challenge like orienting the hand in relation to the object you're picking up without being able to see where the thumbs are that's a bit of a challenge another test is the peg test it's about getting your whole hand in the right position while using the thumb which is something that you normally never have to think about that was good it's really about getting your hand in the right position which you never normally have to think about you just kind of do it it still feels like I don't know, like, you know, when you're like holding something with tongs or something like that, or like, you know, it, I feel very aware that this, this thing is not a natural part of my body. Still having to be quite deliberate with it. Yeah. I would give this a six out of 10 for difficulty. Moving on, I'm going to attempt the Jenga test. 
the goal with this test is to train the user on collaborating with another finger. Pick up two blocks, one between two fingers and the other one between a finger and the third thumb. Yeah. And then place them here. Okay. Um, and then kind of build like this. Okay. So just two is fine. Yeah. I don't want to do it with three. <laughs> Again, it's that really kind of subtle movement that you need. Um, that is kind of quite tough. Yeah, nice, nice, nice. And then right foot in. <laughs> there we go, oh, no, almost. Nice. And also with your thumb as well, your actual thumb as well, your body yeah. for them. There we go. Yeah, nice. There oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I found the Jenga test really difficult. Without any feedback from the third thumb to tell me how hard I was pressing, that sense of proprioception that I learned about in Tokyo, it was really tricky to synchronize my movements with my real thumb. I would give this a difficulty of 11 out of 10. <laughs> So now that we've seen the thumb in action, I wanted to know how using the mechanical third thumb would affect my brain. In case of any problems, squeeze that buzz, yeah? Okay. I want to try it for us? Try the buzzer? Yeah, just to make sure you Okay, okay once was enough, thank you. <laughs> Tamar Makin is a professor of cognitive neuroscience at Cambridge who works with Danny to do research on human augmentation. We use the thumb in order to introduce participants with completely new ways uh, to operate with their body in order to um, do more than they could with just their hands. We took a look at exactly how my brain was responding to the third thumb. This is your hand area and the colour tells us that it is activated. Mm -hmm. The reason it is activated is probably because you are moving your finger in this scan. Is that true? Are you moving your finger? I was moving either my toes or my fingers. So in, in mm -hmm. different trials, I was moving yeah. my pinkies and my thumbs in some trials. And in some trials, I was either moving okay. my third thumb and some trials, I was yeah. moving my toe. Now, let's look what happens when you're using your third thumb. Yeah. So this shows us your foot area being activated. Mm -hmm. You're probably pushing your toes. But if we zoom back to the hand area, we don't see much activity. And this is because your brain didn't have to utilize your hands and pull the muscles of your hands in order to control the thumb. Yeah. So see this knob here? This mm. is your hand area, right? This area would light up when you're using your hand. When you're uh, using your third thumb, you're not really using your hand, you're using, using your feet. So mm. it's gonna be the activity uh, within here. So we have this groove that is crossing along the cortex. We call it the central sulcus. And this little hill up in front of it is your motor cortex. Well, my motor cortex, this yeah. is my brain. And this one here is the somatosensory yeah. cortex. So we control movement with this one. And then as we move, we're gonna get sensory information from the fingers as they're moving, um, from the muscles, maybe if I'm touching yeah. something, and this is gonna come back here to the somatosensory cortex. So these two, parts of the brain work in synchrony with each other. It's this synchrony that allows you fluent motor control. And right here, it's just in the middle, this is like the best piece of real estate you can get in that region, is your hand area. Mm. And it has great connections to lots of other brain areas. And it's also very well connected to this part at the top where your feet are. And I think that's why the toe control works so well, mm. because we have really good ability to communicate between these two brain areas. If you are smart about the design, if you can, you know, think about intuitive design, you can make technologies that are plug and play. Mm. The hardest thing about using the thumb was learning to control it. But in the future, could these robotic limbs be connected directly to your brain via an implanted chip? At the moment, which is the very first earliest days uh, of this field, I think we want to provide a proof of concept that yes, we're very comfortable in our bodies with our five fingers hands, but any um, limitations uh, in using extra fingers and arms is a limitation ultimately of our imagination mm. as humans. There are multiple ways that we are currently demonstrating to embed additional body parts into our bodies, into our brains, into our cognitive awareness. And there is um, no reason why we shouldn't redesign the world in order to take better advantage of these technologies. I'm not sure I need extra arms or another thumb just yet, but the idea of a world where becoming superhuman is as easy as strapping on a backpack, I give that three thumbs up.